Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. We're gonna do a vloggity vlog vlog. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but oh my gosh, you won't believe where I am right now. I can't even believe where I am right now. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I'm in the city. Look how far up I'm down. Don't you wish you were Spider-Man sometimes? So if you're wondering why I'm in Portland, Oregon, I'm gonna take an adventure today because believe it or not, Leica Studios flew me out here to go check out their new set for their upcoming movie, Missing Link. Now, if you don't know who Leica Studios is, then have you heard of Coraline or Kubo in the Two Strings or Paranorman or their one and only new? Actually, I go by Susan. Su Susan. Yeah, Susan. That is a girl's name. Yes, that's correct. It suits you. <laughs> Video montage in three, two, one. So let's go ahead and talk about Leica Studios and their stop motion animations. It's just so much that goes into it. Even the costume design. Getting to listen to Deborah Cook and seeing how she incorporated all these time period pieces for each of these characters and how she picked specific colors. And what you don't know is that all of the costumes are lined with wiring to help move them. When it comes for the animators, they come in and they animate and when they want to show that the clothing is moving in the wind or with their actual movements, the wires are adjusted so that they actually move with the characters to make it look like a flowing gust of wind and just like, you know, how your shirt gets ruffled and blows in the wind. So let's talk about how these puppets are built. And they're puppets, but they look like little robots or little animatronics, but they're not. They're puppets. They're full of these little mechanics and wirings and dowel rods and everything to help animators jump in and move them. And they're built of wires so that they can move frame by frame by frame, every picture, like itty bitty pieces. They are there, they are made like that to help hold up their entire body and to actually flowingly move them and for the animators to animate them a little bit more. But it's just amazing in how the fur is made on Mr. Link. I mean, just look at it and it was so rubbery and funny and squishy. I just wanted to squish it. It was like a little squishy. And look at the hands. See how intricate they are? Just little wires. Wires and little metal skeletons. Oh my goodness. And the emotions and the faces. Just just listen to Brian McLean about this. So animators are removing faces. They're animating the, the rest of the puppet by hand. They're taking an exacto blade. And this is the second most disturbing thing I'm going to do. <laughs> is they stab the eyeball and the eyelid with this sharp exacto blade and that's how they're animating the eyelid and the eyeball around. Wow. And the faces are made by 3D printing. It was amazing to see the different versions of all the 3D printing that Leica has gone through from Coraline to Paranorman to Kubo and to finally Missing Link. Came up with after about a year of development was this idea of a separate 3D printed ring that would correspond with each replacement face. So this, we refer to these as drivers, and these drivers are replaceable. And they have magnets in them, and they have little embedded fingers inside Link's uh, fur. And an animate, this driver shape changes and matches the shape of the face. So as the face is ooh and ah, it's driving and pulling fur along with it. So an animator would go in every frame or almost every frame, put in a new driver, get the magnets in place, and then depending on the tension of the head, they sometimes need to put in this little alley. So there are hundreds and hundreds of faces for each character and all their emotions that Brian and his team create for these characters. And if you think the face design is intricate, then let me tell you about how the animators animate all the puppets. Yeah, I've got left to right here, I've got front to back, and up and down. And it kind of works like a giant extra, extra sketch, kind of positioning things in space. And then I have rotate here, and then if I'm able to just kind of pop the limp around here, you can see then I have another rotate function right on the back here. 
And this is so the animators can position the puppet and then they can go in and they can play with the limbs knowing that the actual core of the puppet's not done and live around. So these puppets are being held up by all these anchoring systems and just like, I mean, we even have a close-up of Mr. Link's butt and then look at these amazing intricate designs to animate under the puppets. And then you have all these dowel rods and all these mechanics on the backside to go in and you just move them and that's how they move their heads. It is so incredibly insane and amazing how much thought and design goes into all of these. <laughs> That's an inside joke from Missing Link. You have to go see it. It's quite one of the funniest moments that I've seen. <laughs> and now let's talk about the set design and just the little itty bitty props. Have you ever done any model making before? If you have, then you know how tedious the work is when it comes to making little itty bitty pieces. But let's talk about the sets and the models for all the sets all the props, all the set design, all the set decorating, and how amazing these sets are. They are so tiny to work with. Not only are you working with puppets, but you're moving around the set pieces and the grass and you're lighting it. Oh my goodness, and Leica does such an amazing job of making these beautiful stories come to life. And just look at the grass and the blue undertones of the forest. And just, oh yeah, I had to touch it. You just have to touch it. You just have to touch something. <laughs> but it was just so amazing just seeing it all up close. And here it is, you see, look at all the little itty bitty pieces of furniture and the props. And there's all these teams at Leica that focus on the set decorating and the lighting and just the little props too. There's a props team, I need to work for that. I wanna be on the props team for sure to make all these little model making. And there, you just look at all this and you think how much patience goes into everything and how much time goes into everything. And that's why these amazing stop animations take so long for Leica to make because there's just, there's a lot of thought going into these. A lot of thought and a lot, a lot of pictures. I think one of my favorite things from this entire set tour of Missing Link is that I got, it's just amazing to hear like the painting schemes and the color design and the color palettes they choose and everything is built to scale. These sets are built to scale for the puppets. If you ever built a model set and you had to build to scale, you know how much mathematics and just time and patience goes into actually building a scale model for something to make sure everything, all the sizes are correct. So everything that your little chandelier in your house has to match and be as big as these little puppets are. They are so tiny and you, you just don't know size and proportion to size and scaling to size until you see something as amazing as this. I have a theater production background and I know how hard and how much effort goes into creating a stage set for people to know this world and then you look at this entire world that the Leica animators and creators are actually making and they're tiny, they're tiny worlds and how much thought goes into them and you have these animators hanging in the air on these aerial lifts that are up way up high so they can get the shots for this movie and get the scenes put together. It's just amazing. <laughs> this was my first Leica film with Coraline. So being here and seeing the puppets are amazing. I'm so excited. Look at
It was a really huge moment for me to see all the Coraline puppets because I fell in love with Like It Studios and have not missed a single stop motion um, film that has been in theaters. I went and saw every single one because Coraline was the one that started it all for me. And this, I saw Coraline 10 years ago when I was a senior in high school and I remember doing an entire project of Like It Studios and Coraline for an art class and I just, oh, I love it so much. And just being able to see the actual puppets. I've never seen a real Coraline puppet in my life and just, I was totally fangirling. Guys, this entire experience was amazing. Thank you so much, Laika and Annapurna for flying me out here to see Missing Link set and to see the puppets and everything. And I got to make little mini watercolors so that they could meet their puppets and actually get pictures of my artwork with the puppets. Oh, it's just an art explosion and I'm so inspired by this entire journey. Thank you, thank you. I hope you all will all go see Missing Link, which is in theaters April 12th. Oh, I can't wait. Go see Missing Link, guys. You're not going to regret it. Will not be easy, but we will find your place. Throw the knife, Bowie! <laughs> I gotcha! Oh. Oh. Shangri-La? We call it... <laughs> What does it mean? Keep out, we hate you.